is your Catholic Daily Journal for Friday, February the 22nd, 2019. It's the ancient feast of the chair of St. Peter, which is a real chair, and it's in a grand display above the Bernini altar at St. Peter's Basilica in Rome. It may have been the actual chair that St. Peter sat upon when he presided at Mass and when he made official declarations about the teaching of Jesus. Whether or not it is, it's a potent symbol, especially in ancient Rome. The discussions took place standing, but whenever the emperor or the governor or even the father of the household was prepared to make the decision, he would sit in his chair and speak ex cathedra. The chair of St. Peter, as a symbol of the authority of St. Peter, goes back to the 4th or 5th century. Over the years, the chair at Antioch got involved as well because Peter was the founding bishop there. And so there were two feasts of the chair of St. Peter, one identified with his seat of authority in Antioch and the other in Rome. In 1960, Pope John XXIII combined the feasts for the Roman Church. Of course, the church in Antioch still retains both. Today in 1924, a milestone of technology, my favorite U.S. President, Calvin Coolidge, became the first president to deliver a radio address from the White House. Coolidge followed the scandalous career of Warren Harding, and he was Mr. Middle Class. He was also a huge believer in aggressive non-action. He napped for two or three hours every afternoon, and he signed very, very few bills into law. He believed that the people would orient the government rather than the other way around, and he was loved for it. Modern scholars, most of whom are big government-oriented, tend to rate Coolidge as below average, but his statistics tell another story. Today in 1924, his speech to Congress, given months earlier, was broadcast from the White House, and despite Coolidge proposing many of the same kinds of policies that his wildly unpopular predecessor had proposed, Coolidge's speech was well received. He was the first media president. He was the first to deliver a recorded speech via radio, the first to deliver a live speech via radio, the first president inaugurated on live radio, and he signed the Radio Act of 1927, establishing the Federal Radio Commission. And finally today in 1980, it was the miracle on ice. Lake Placid, New York, the 13th Olympic Winter Games, the height of the Cold War, The U.S. is run by an actor-turned-governor-turned-president named Ronald Reagan. The USSR has thousands of nuclear missiles targeted at the U.S., ready to fire in less than half an hour's notice. The Soviet Union has won the gold medal in men's hockey for five of the six previous Winter Olympic Games. They were mostly pro players with lots of experience in international play. The U.S. team is entirely amateurs and the youngest team in the entire competition. For the first game in the medal round, the U.S. drew Russia, and no one thought for a second that the U.S. had a chance. And of course, everyone's head is all over the idea that the U.S. and Russia are fighting this great Cold War, this game of chicken, and the entire world, all of our lives, are in the balance. And at any point, someone pushes the wrong button and the world comes to an end with thousands of nuclear bombs exploding all at once, and the U.S. draws Russia. It was 2-2 after the first period, Russia led 3-2 after the second, and then out of nowhere, the young, inexperienced, amateur U.S. team scores two in the third period, and they take the game 4-3. to three. A bunch of scrappy young Americans beat the invincible Soviet professionals. Everyone saw the event for what it was. It was a miracle on ice. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. Until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.